Super these bands, you have not been playing Mobile Legends for the past two, three months. Yeah, Valir is just really, really powerful as of right now. A lot of teams kind of value his capability to kind of push people away. It's like you engage, banning. no, stay back, <laughs> get stay out. in your place. But then Varl being nerfed in this patch, his damage every single uh, skill is actually reduced a lot. If, if, if but the, then his passive and his uh, knockback is really annoying. Even if the damage is reduced, right? It's I still think, painful. Yeah, it's not. It's a CC. The, the fact that you know any hero that wants to catch the team, especially if they're defending, you know, at the turret. Yeah. This is just so easy to push everybody away. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's true. That's true. Especially if you play with cooldown reduction items, it's gonna be super annoying to fight against. Yeah. And what's really annoying about this patch is that Your a lot of these other heroes, are, they, they 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 look to kind of shift the power balance a little mm. bit more, and they're bringing other heroes to hopefully build them up in later patches or maybe even now if some teams can abuse them and that's when you see like oh Kimmy now what does Evos want to pick here I'm guessing that they are looking to hold on to Grok but Cho is also a very viable option here so what do they value more and you can see them up I on hope. stage Zayz he's thinking about this hard like oh man I have 25 seconds to decide on which utility hero I need to give my team for first pick there's even x Borg on the table they're done they're done they're, 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 picking they're thinking if they pick Grok they're gonna let the <laughs> Oh, we forgot about X Borg, man. I told you, X Borg, Grok, Cho. Uh, those are the three. And now oh Resurgence. Oh my goodness, Cho confirmed. Join Grok, join Grok. Okay. 100% Cho with that, man. Are you sure you're giving it over uh, to Resurgence? But at the same time, X Borg is so strong. So strong. But I mean, yep. it's 1v2 technically. They give away two good heroes. Oh. Again, that's the benefit of being on the red side. Oh my goodness. And you know, just by using a DPS hero can actually burst off that fear garment, which has been kind of nerfed as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You letting go Aeon 100% hero win rate and Grok, which being buffed in terms of damage. Are you sure about that? Personally, I think it was a mistake to ban out the Kufra here because you're already seeing, oh, hey, look, we have options. We could have banned out the Cho early and picked it up for ourselves. But I think Evo's Esports here are looking to kind of punish Resurgence by setting it up for their mage. Potentially, we may see a Gushin. I could be wrong about this, but oh dear Bambi, we've seen him time and time again perform really well on these mages. He just needs to make sure that bouncing ball isn't in effect. Dude, this is a game of, you know, I'm going to take these heroes so you don't have it. They took the Esmeralda, took the Akai as well, so there's no way the tank can actually actually displaced Esmeralda. At the same time, they took away the Chang'e. You know? hey, the, the Singaporeans really love playing Chang'e. Chang'e is like Kimi in the version of a mage. mage. Yeah. Exactly. And she's very fast, very squishy, but very high range hero. And the ultimate cooldown is not that high as well. Exactly. So you, can, you, can, you can bring it back and, and it's good for defense or offense both ways. Absolutely. All and the mage these days are like that. It's like Gorp at the same time too. Okay, let's let's just put it this way. Mages in Mobile Legends are becoming tanks. Alright, which uh, let's talk Harith, Esmeralda, Your like these guys are lasting longer than me playing Brock or Johnson. <laughs> I have to agree, totally. Absolutely. And Harith, John Johnson man. One of your favorite heroes, I'm not yeah, mistaken, but, right? Yeah, I'm not playing that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it later. We got another band coming in. Terizla is banned. Gideon, yeah. what do you think? This is really smart because now they're looking for options to kind of limit Resurgence. But I think at this point, Resurgence really have won the draft at this point in time. If they can if they can hold on to maybe getting that first pick onto that lo of Lolita, that completely denies EVOS Esports a counter, as some form of counterplay Your against the Chang'e. So it's either EVOS, JPL, and Ace, they have to play out of their absolute minds to catch Leo off Moore. that back line. If not, Your it's going to be a tough, tough picking. game. Okay, you're talking about back line here. I was hoping they take I pick up Terizla instead of uh, taking a Kai straight in the game because if they pick Terizla, he can jump in and penalty zone and getting Chang'e at the back kind of a really good combination when it comes to insanity from x -Borg itself. So I kind of question why they take a Kai first instead of Terizla and banning out Terizla here. Well, mainly because, again, Chang'e is difficult to catch because her movement speed already, and a couple of nerfs have been given over to the penalty uh, over to the penalty oh, zone yeah. for the Terizla. She can actually zoom out of it the moment she activates her ability, gets the buff, walks directly out. But not to mention, Evos have a couple of options still. The question is, what do they want as their secondary tank to kind of round out the composition? Oh, probably a Lolita. Oh, okay, never mind. Lolita. I'm going to say that because the shield is really, really helpful is to picking. tank away whatever Chang'e is throwing at you. But this is a really sneaky player if they choose eight rat heroes like this. Hi, Ibusa will be super annoying, hard to catch. You only have 100%. Well, we're talking about a lot of uh, split pushing heroes here. I mean, I, uh, personally, I don't like this. Wait, um, I, I actually prefer Evos's 
But I don't know, we have Lilmo on that side, so it's not that bad when it comes to late game. And they can have very, very good damage here uh, for Lilmo in late game too. You're not wrong. Definitely not wrong here. But again, if you look into the mind of the uh, Resurgence as of right now, they're prioritizing making sure that Aeon is going to be that playmaker for the team. Because again, they had an option to flex uh, to flex pick the chill, say, hey, we don't want Lancelot. Lilia more. We could have picked the Lolita oh for ourselves goodness, to protect dude. the uh, to protect the Changa early on. So again, this is a very interesting way of looking exactly. at the game. Exactly. I didn't see this one coming for Lancelot, Lancelot to be the last pick. Is this okay for them to not picking a really, really solid late hero? Mm. Uh, we can talk about it a little bit more. It's going to be a bit of thinking here. Well, we're walking into our first game of the day for MPL Season 4. I'm very, very hyped up for this game. Yeah, this is going to be a really sweaty bout between both of these teams. The Lancelot, they're going to be looking to play the split push composition, especially from the side of Resurgence. They want to keep control over the game, but Evos, I think they've got a plan to start looking to punish early on into the game. Oh, I'm really intrigued on bottom lane because they're stealing off the buff of Evos SG. I don't think they realize that just yet. Because this is going to be a bummer for Xbox. Well, I think um, Lancelot is having a hard time as well on top, and they might steal the buff. It's kind of a mimicking each other's play style for both of a team. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But the beauty about Lancelot is that he can be he can play very, very safe. He doesn't mind just kind of clearing the wave, sitting back, playing it slowly, and just doing it time and time again. Blood might be in a little bit of trouble. He takes the initial charge, but again, he wants to pull backwards. Very early damage coming in. Aeon is kind of holding his ground, but most importantly, Resurgence were able to get the buff off the opposite side of the map. Hey, Bullet Potato didn't miss that Rhapsody just now, but now Mr. V, I think it's really tanky for them to fight against. And there it goes, Bullet be the first blood, diving for the jump there. And the Rhapsody finish off with the Gringo getting that first blood. They have great punish coming in from Evo Esports. They hit the level points, they're like, top side needs to go. First pause of the day has come through. Can we get like a pause counter just in case? I, I've been going through many, many times where uh, technical issues are a factor, and more importantly, we don't want to see these players not being able to play at their very best. Right? And then, you know, it doesn't really help sometimes when that happens, but. Um, uh, it wouldn't be more of a legend if there's no hiccups. Yeah, Something I guess. I mean, sometimes normal. we gotta make sure that everything is perfectly yep. fine yes. before we get into the game, because if it's not. There's going to be a lot of trouble, mm -hmm. and we don't want that. And uh, let's, I mean, there's not much we can talk about regarding the game because it's just a rise. Is there anything you guys can talk yeah, well, about? There's a first blood on Granger, which is the marksman, which is really, really frightening if he got the first blood. Imagine if Granger already kind of a farmed up early of the game. How do you fight that? <laughs> True, I mean, I mean that's, that's what I expect. I mean, Evos, you guys even remember from Season 2, they were the guys with the fast games, but, yeah. you know, uh, Singaporean teams, they're known for having quicker games. You know, they, they try they I, tend to do it. I wouldn't say quicker games. I would say that they, if they have a lead, sure, but I think they're more methodical, more systematical in terms of how they decide uh, at each phase of the game what their objectives are going to be. Like, hey, Looking at this particular game, it's a little bit more interesting, a little bit, I would say, unorthodox, mainly because Evos is like, hey, we see that top side, we see that Lancelot, we're going to make sure he has a terrible time. time. I okay. think the same goes for the bottom lane just now. Mm -hmm. they have, that's the thing, the Singaporean team, they have been fighting a lot of uh, local tournaments, and they've been fighting each other for such a long time. Yeah. So I think they kind of have a, a, a almost the same way of a similar play style. If you've seen how what they did just now, it's kind of mimicking each other. So it's like almost like the same, but a little bit different. Same, same, but different. Yeah, same, same. That, but that's the word we're looking for. I would, well, say that <laughs> <laughs> I would say that they're making correct moves because yep. they assessed it. Okay, top lane, what's going on there? Why are there three people over there? Oh, they have the arrival on that Leomorph. They're going to go for that early invade, take away our buff. Fine, whatever, be that way. We're going to respond on our own hand, going to your opposite buff, take that away to kind of even out the gold. The mm -hmm. bigger question for me here is, will Lancelot still be relevant into the later stages of the game? Because yes, oh, he 
kind of scales, but he's also really difficult to use. That is true. Oh, I mean, talking about a pro players. Do we? Yeah. Do we? Do we see a lot of Lancelot in the regular season? No, not, not as really. much, right? I think exactly. there's only a couple of times, like maybe once or twice. That's it. Did it but work no. out well? Um, difficult. Not really. No. <laughs> not really. I would say difficult. No. Hey, what, 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 <laughs> what? No. <laughs> no. no. Stop. What would you? What would you go with otherwise if you didn't go with Lancelot? Liamorn. Because Liamorn. What's the beauty of Liamorn is he's got decent matchups, he's got bad matchups, but he has a lot of options. And even if you make him 0 and 8, he scales into the game. He will mm. always be relevant, and that's the most important thing. That's true, and it's so easy to stay safe at the same time being offensive at the, at like in your lane, because you can run away with your ultimate, and at the same time you can poke people with your first kill. It's like you're not going right. to get harm at all, and you have that turret to save you. That's right. Now, we are jumping into the game, so I'm going to pass it back to you. Uh, he was getting the tower straight after they got the first blood now, but Mr. V is solo on top of the rush. Oh up. boy. He was He's taking too much just damage. going in and getting one more kill. Lolita gets that one. Mm, that's a little unfortunate. Mr. V as well. Uh, uh, Mr. V goes down Tidal once more. Technically, soon. he shouldn't be going down at this point in time, but he at least cleared the way. They don't lose that turret. They have a clear idea that they want Lancelot to have a decent time, and now they're going to try and keep control over this turtle side. And now Evos has to make a choice here because somebody has to face check. Here we oh. go. Soul already taking quite a bit of damage, breaking that Viagra armor. Really important because he needs to charge it off with something. Uh, they're gonna quite over turtle this time around because, like it or not, resurgence have to face it. They need this turtle to come back into the game, even though they're not that big of a goal difference just yet. 2000 is wide enough in the early game for me. Ah, uh, 1000 plus plus. Oh, look at that fun fact. Evo's esports has a 100% win rate on that Akai, and honestly, coming in from JPL, that's I, I I feel like that's a little expected. Like, sure, don't you don't have to flex on this. We know. Oh, well, we're talking about AO with 100% on show as well by Hitman Project with the Hurricane that finish a flipper just in the nick of time. JPL is being punished back with that Omedia Ring from Obi. That's a lot of damage that he tanked just now. Yeah, and that's only one point in time, Meteor Shower. That's <laughs> one point, which is really, really not fair to a certain extent, but you know, it happens. You give some, you win some, you lose some. And I think for Evo's esports here, the most difficult thing for them is looking for a strong engage because. Yes, they have the Akai, but that's their only option. Now, Aeon already put the Ray of the Dragon on top of Ace. Ace is in a lot of trouble. He's stuck right in between. The Phantom Execution locks him out. Lun was able to get the assist. Doesn't get the kill, but do they get a little bit more off of this? Now, Potato being super safe and not being saved by the rest of the team, but they might engage for mid lane now because they're looking at the rotation into the Turtle's pit. And this doesn't look that great for both of the team because they are quite short in terms of a manpower. Try to set things up, resurgence. Mr. V is really pressuring mid lane. Yeah, and now they've, they've kind of switched the lanes here because Lancelot is now in rewards because he can do, he can help out with that turtle really, really fast. And Viamort on the top side actually has a pretty good matchup into, especially in to the expert. Oh, do they want to make a play here? Ace taking quite a bit of damage, which is okay. Wave the dragon kicks him back. The rest of the team already on top of him. Albi, he hasn't used that meteor shower just yet. The back line is a lot of trouble. Esmeralda is taking him out, but the rest of his team is slowly getting cut down. Evos, they might be able to make this out. They've already taken two members. Albi is in trouble. Oh dear, Bambi ain't kill. gonna let him go, but a double clear to clean it up from Lana. They're gonna go for a full clear. Evos Esports in the lead. First wipeout of a team you're looking at in the first game, and that's less than five minutes into. We're gonna go and see the highlights, which is brought to you by a legendary black shark. We're looking how just now everybody, what really happened? They were kind of segregated for the team. Obi being zoned out by Esmeralda there. Resurgence, obviously, it looks like it's bad, but they can't give up the lead. So they have to try and salvage it. You sacrifice five members, all right, sure. At least they were able to clean up some of the other members, and especially since Sana, he's gonna be the one to hopefully scale into this game because right now Changa is going to struggle time and time again against that Esmeralda. They need someone to peel her off. That's true and I see that Lolita has been targeted a lot by Aeon and that didn't finish her off with that way of Dragon. I don't know, is that even a waste that we're talking about? Because the, the moment JPL hopped in with a hurricane does push everybody away. You don't really have any skills in terms of uh, the side of the surges there. 
Oh, uh, not. Quickly flickers forward, tries to get that third hit to Kundo. Takes a full hit. He usually quickly uses the triple. He's trying to get out of there, positions himself perfectly on the opposite side of that hurricane dance. He survives with a sliver of his health. He's getting a little too confident here, but on the middle part of the map, Grok is trying to bail out while Charger's out of the way. He saves his life, but they do take it. Now, they are taking out Ace. Can they peel him off? He doesn't have blood, doesn't have the ultimate. The Phantom Execution Turtle is already down, but they were soon. still able to take him out. Well played to Resurgence. Yeah, but then you're sacrificing the mid lane there. We're looking at export never actually only once engaged with the rest of the team for a team fight. But once they all fight, can they actually hold it for Resurgence? We're looking time by time. The Aeon always uses his way of record on a tank and then manage to get it on any of the cores. Is it enough for him to go back at the back line there? Because we've seen how he's being punished just now with just a slither of health and there goes the turtle got back into the footing is none other than Evo's eSport, even though they were being wiped up, well, almost wiped up. Yeah, that's gonna give him a little bit of EXP. Now, again, 3k gold lead ahead for Evo's eSport. Mr. V and JPL kind of having the biggest slugfest here in the middle of the river, but Aeon wants to make the play. Soul's kind of in trouble here, but they need to catch somebody out. Way of the Dragon needs to happen, locks him in place. He doesn't get the catch. Aeon's in trouble. He needs to get out of there. He should pose out of the way, but the rest of the resurgence lock the mouth in from the tri brush. They're gonna quickly Push on through. Can they pick up a kill here? Can they catch somebody out? Mr. VT doing a lot of damage here, but on the middle, bottom side of the map, they respond taking out the Lancelot. This is a long slugfest. Oh, JPL is still lingering around there, even though his HP is really not great. There goes the hammer drop, didn't hit anybody. And there goes a little bit knocked up here and there, but hey, a big punisher. He's being surrounded by two of them, and he can't get to the tower. Killing he spree. got in, but Esmeralda can the course, all Leomo, you were saying Leomo is really vital, but they are not doing great for resurgence, being punished back when they disrespect the turret right beneath under the tier two. They have to call off their plays if it goes wrong. I think resurgence is trying too hard to salvage what, what can't be salvageable, and they're losing a lot of their leads because of it. The gold lead has now extended to 5k. They just got an extra 2k off of that play for the side of Evo's Esports. Oh, look at Bambi just harassing every single members of Resurgence. Loon and Obi have to just go back and regen. There's no way they can show their faces in the lane right now. Yep, and honestly, I think Resurgence shouldn't have been looking for the play. They should have just played for it, not only for the split push, but for the seed because you have options like Chang'e. Uh, she can clear wave, she can harass people under turret, and that should have been the play, rather than expect Aeon to kind of set up these almost ridicule, Lord, ridiculous Lord, resurrecting dives. soon. And we're looking at Lord, less than two seconds now. Will they try to fight it? If Resurgence get this Lord, they might get back into the game, but Evos on the other hand, they are leading quite a lot, 5k in difference. And we're talking about 11 to 5 in terms of scoreboard, and Bambi mega is still kill. Diffidel, and that's a mega kill. I talk about this. You don't want the marksman really leading into the game in the early phase, and now they are paying for it. Yep. Inside. They are getting really heavily punished here when they shouldn't be. They've, they've definitely made some mistakes, and I think Evo's Esports has kind of got their foot in the door, and they just have to pry it open once they get lower. They need to get those inhibitor turrets and end this game for the Surgeons. Evo's having all the space that they want, but on top, we're looking at a little more split push and get a second tower. They really lost one turn for Evo's Esports. They really need to keep back into the game with extra gold to get themselves a little bit more up, but Aeon again managed to hit on JPL instead, kind of a block into Esmeralda's view. So that kind of saved their course. Bambi is being saved again by the team. It's really hard for Aeon to get a position right. Mr. He might be the second fish oh, left. No. You're right underneath the tower at that. Big oh. ultimates, big ultimates. Falling Moonstar does come through, but the Wild Charge is able to cast it in time to get him out of a very dangerous situation yes. here. But Lord is coming. There is no Wild Charge, and by the time Lord is knocking on their door, the ultimate should be back up here, but again, you can't make a play until the Lord is knocking on their door. That's true, and we're looking at endless battle only on Lancelot. Will it be enough?
enough for him to defend. We know he's very squishy, but no damage at this stage. Only Alice Bell is not enough to take down the shields on Esmeralda. There's also Ace Shield, and there's also GPL already very tanky. And Firaka Arrow is so, it's kind of hard to take that one down. Yeah, but at, uh, the only saving grace Resurgent has as of right now is that they have really good wave clear with a lot of their heroes. The Chanta, uh, they have options. Uh, they have options such as Lun on that Lancelot. It's super useful, but again, this is the break, make or break it point for Evo's esports here. And Thor is charging right here. Mr. Beats trying to sold them out, but it's not enough. And at this stage, they are really sacrificing their tank. He could use the wall charge, but that's still not enough to finish one down. Unless for Lolita to can oh, stop with the weight of Dragon. But gets more kills on Bambi El Potato here. 5 0 4. That's a marksman not touchable by Resurgence team. Yep, and they're pulling back. Soul takes quite a bit of damage there, but Lun again, Trigger breaks off the last insanity. They're gonna do A OK. They hold on to a sliver of the move on the back line. It takes out. It takes out their mid later. Now they have to deal with the rest of the team who is knocking on death's door. Evo's esports convincingly take that fight. Breaks the last inhibitor. Looks to pull back or end the game right here, Monster right kill. now. Evo's esports double pick kill. up another kill. A double kill. Make it unstoppable. And they take the core away. Wow, that was a very fast-paced game done by Evos. They were kind of 50-50 at first, but that marksman...